Hello everybody and welcome to our fourth video in our series of videos on the Age of Exploration. Today we will be looking at the beginnings of the Atlantic slave trade and also the voyage of Bartolomeu Diaz. Last time we looked at Prince Henry the Navigator and we looked at his explorations of the Western African coast. Uh, we looked at some of the motivations for this exploration, namely gold, God and glory. We also looked at his school of navigation in Sagra and some of the developments there, such as the caravan ship, where uh, Latin sails and rudders were used. Uh, we also looked at Portland charts uh, and how they helped make more accurate maps for sailors. So before we begin today's presentation, again, we will look at the learning outcomes from this video. So first of all, I would like you to know how Portugal set up the future Atlantic trade network, um, sorry, slave trade network. Secondly, I would like you to know why Portugal started a slave trading network. And last, I would like you to be able to describe how Diaz reached the southernmost tip of Africa. The beginnings of the Atlantic slave trade, which will be responsible for transporting 11 million West Africans um, to the Americas uh, as slaves, it really began here with the Portuguese exploration of the West Coast of Africa. As we stated last time, Henry's voyages were not self-funding voyages. Portugal, they didn't have the wealth of the Middle Eastern merchants or China. So Portuguese explorers had to return with valuables to help pay for their journeys. Unfortunately, and rather grotesquely, one of those valuables was enslaved people. Now, slavery has always been a scourge on humanity for as long as history has been recorded. Um, from the Old Testament to the Vikings bringing Irish slaves to settle colonies such as Iceland. But the sheer scale and ruthlessness of this particular slave trade, uh, which would continue for the next 400 years, it is particularly uh, disgusting and vile. So as we said, a real unfortunate consequence of Henry's explorations was that they came into contact with certain West African civilizations who were willing to trade their prisoners of war with the Portuguese for um, other valuable goods. Um, so the first real area where slaves were traded out of was this highlighted area here around Senegal and Guinea. Um, the Portuguese, they set up uh, trading posts and fortresses here at places such as Basu, as you can see on the map here. Um, and although in the last map we said that they didn't discover Sierra Leone until uh, 1460 when Henry died, they had set up a trading partnership in Lagos in Nigeria from 1444, uh, where slaves were shipped uh, to the Portuguese fortresses at Basu, and although it's not on the map here, this area below Cape Bojador, there's another fortress known as Anguin, uh, and um, they would have traded with this place, Lagos. Um, so, well, again, quite grotesquely, uh, Henry the Navigator had a monopoly on selling slaves in Portugal. So that means he was the only person allowed to sell them until his death in 1460. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, in 1455, um, the Pope, Pope Nicholas II, granted Portugal the right to continue the slave trade in West Africa, so long as they converted the slaves to Christianity first. Um, again, uh, this is something that is, is quite a shocking and, and really hypocritical um, policy. Uh, but it did give moral legitimacy to the slave trade for the Portuguese. So uh, why um, were slaves considered valuable in Portugal? Well, Portugal was a really poorly populated area. It had around a population of about 1.5 million people uh, as compared to the seven or eight million people who lived in the neighboring uh, kingdom of Castile. Uh, 
which is a part of Spain. We'll be looking at that actually in a future video. And the one million live in another part of Spain known as Aragon. So they have a shortage of labour. So that's people to work the land uh, in the large towns and for the nobility. So the introduction of slaves helped Portugal as a country grow. Also, they needed labourers for the new islands they had conquered, the Azores uh, and the Cape Verde Islands, and they didn't have the population within their own country. So this idea of a lack of manpower or labourers, that's going to become crucial when we look at the explosion of the slave trade in the Americas um, later on. However, back in Portugal um, at this time, it is believed that in the 1450s there was an average of 1,000 slaves arriving every year from West Africa. After 1490, they believe there's an average of 2,000 slaves arriving every year from West Africa. This really, this uptake really begins when they begin trading with the empires of Benin and uh, the Congo Empire. And as you can see from our map here, the Benin and the Congo are the next two major slave trading areas uh, where Portugal gets their slaves from. Um, by the 1550s, the colonization of the Americas now was in full swing. We'll be looking at that in a future video. And in Portugal alone, there were 70, or in Lisbon alone, excuse me, there were 70 separate slave merchants, uh, including the official royal slaving company. So that's 70 businesses that were dealing in selling slaves. We will be coming back to this slave network in later videos, but this is just to highlight where the slave trade really began. However, uh, slaves weren't the only thing that were traded. Uh, as Portugal began to explore further and further along the west coast of Africa, they set up uh, two forts along the Gold Coast uh, in modern-day Ghana uh, in the 1480s, from which they traded for gold. Um, they pushed further and further south uh, with an explorer known as Diego Chao, uh, exploring the mouth of the river Congo. Uh, they kept moving south, they passed the equator, they explored countries below the Congo uh, along the coasts of Angola and Namibia and then finally in 1488 a sailor named Bartolome Diaz found what the Portuguese had been after, a direct route to the lucrative Indian Ocean Trade Network. We have talked about the Indian Ocean Trade Network we know that this is a very um, important uh, trade route which uh, Portugal had no direct access to. So Diaz set sail from Lisbon uh, in uh, August of 1487. Uh, and as he passed by the Pedraos of uh, Chao uh, in the River Congo, he stopped uh, around this, what's marked here as port, uh, Nola, which would be on the mouth of the River Orange, which he also explored. Um, and he became the first European sailor to reach modern day South Africa in February of 1488. So he explored the area for a few months, uh, and in May he rounded the southernmost tip of the continent, which he called Cape Storms due to the weather. Uh, he erected a pedrao there to mark the journey um, and after failing to convince his crew to continue on sailing to go to India to try to get to the um, Indian Ocean Trade Network, he eventually returned home to Portugal uh, as a hero in December of 1488. Uh, it was here that uh, King John renamed the Cape of Storms to Cape of Good Hope because now Portugal had a route which potentially gave them direct access to the Indian Ocean trade network. So they wouldn't have to deal with other merchants in Europe or North Africa to get the things that they wanted from the Indian Ocean. So that would be stuff like spices and other uh, silks and materials such as that. So that brings us to the end of the presentation. Again, just to recap our learning outcomes from this, you should know how Portugal set up the future Atlantic trade network. So you should know that from 1444, Prince Henry the Navigator was trading for slaves 
uh, outside uh, from Lagos and from the ports in Bissau and Anguin. Uh, you should know why Portugal started a slave trading network. So they started a slave trading network because of a lack of manpower within their own country um, and also because of the riches that it brought. And finally, you should be able to describe how Diaz reached the southernmost tip of Africa. Again, he's building on the voyages of those who went before him, such as Diego Chao, who got to uh, the Congo, um, the explorers sponsored by Prince Henry the Navigator, who in 1460 got as far as Sierra Leone, and then how he rounded the southernmost tip of Africa, naming it the Cape of Storms, which King John renamed Cape of Good Hope. Uh, so that's the end of the video. I hope you uh, enjoyed it and got something worthwhile from it. Thanks for watching.